Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join me here in the midst of a second playthrough of Cyberpunk's 2077. This game came a long way since its original release in 2020. CD Projekt Red have buffed and fixed the majority of issues with a host of updates that have been delivered over the last three years. And the net result for me as a player has been extremely rewarding. The question I would like to explore in this video is ultimately is Cyberpunk 2077 worth playing in 2023? Does it have the legs to carry itself now for returning players who maybe like me abandoned their progress back in 2020 after realizing the game was just broken? Also for brand new experience for first time players, how does the game stand up against other first person and open world experiences for them? When I originally played this game back in 2022, I was looking for something to replace GTA Online, which had started to get very boring and repetitive. I hadn't been a massive first person gamer up to this point, but I started to appreciate the immersion experience with games like Resident Evil Biohazard, so I wasn't totally put off to find out that Cyberpunk was just a first person game and there was very little opportunity to even look at your character. I was looking for an open world experience that essentially led by story and narrative, but most importantly would give me a deep dive into a new surrounding and new opportunities both for my character V and also for me as a player. And it takes some time to realise that the beauty of this game is that these two become one in a very rewarding way. In 2020 the game had echoes of price. So yeah sure there were times it was very unplayable, there were lots of bugs and failings that did leave me frustrated and quite annoyed. But also the game was difficult for me to master. Some of the missions were really gruelling, taking hours to complete, and I just didn't simply have enough time to invest in the patience and time that I clearly needed to get the best out of the game. Three years later, approaching the game with a fresh pair of eyes, things feel different, and I actually played a five hour trial for free via the PlayStation Plus network. And before I was two hours in, I could tell that the game was just amazing. Maybe the patches and updates have made the game work better and sure visually my PS5 was doing its job to make Night City and the surrounding areas look amazing. But I stepped away after the initial three hours of my trial feeling full of promise. I was ready starting to fizz with the available opportunities and I purchased the game shortly afterwards at a discount and I haven't really looked back and to be honest I've been my first playthrough in around 55 hours and I think I rushed it a bit. There's still a little bit more for me to do within the game before I exhaust all those opportunities and decide how much time you can really spend within the game when you finally run out of missions and objectives to work with. I chose a female character for my first playthrough. For me this works best and choosing your gender does have consequences for the playthrough so bear that in mind mostly in terms of the interaction with the supporting characters within the game. You see there are four romance options available for V and only two of them are available for either your feminine or masculine version of the character. The romance within the game plays a big part of the journey especially as the story develops and V needs interaction you see and for me the relationships that V experiences during the playthrough is one of the most important factors. One of the nicest things to do is to end my sessions in one of my apartments and then seeing V wake up next to her girlfriend or boyfriend, leaving them sleeping as she or he goes off into the city in search of opportunities and answers. That's the immersion working at its best. I launched a second playthrough with my male character to explore some of the other choices within the main story campaign and take advantage of some of the romance options which are unavailable to you if you do start with a female character. In actual fact, running two playthroughs simultaneously works very well. During my first playthrough I focused on the main story campaign, not really knowing where it was going. I virtually ignored the side missions and the gigs and the other missions, all trying to get my attention every time I looked at the map. But as I started to feel like I was getting close to the finale, I realised that maybe I was playing the game incorrectly. I'd been slowly collecting eddies, which are the in-game currency, and you need this to purchase cyberware, weapons, vehicles, property, etc. I started to work my way through the available missions, paying more attention to the, those smaller side missions and phone calls I was getting as I was moving around the map. Slowly but surely I started to build more of a connection with V and generate more currency and I was able to start splashing out on things to make my character look better, feel better, both in combat and in operation during the missions. In truth, the game is playable in many ways, with most missions being available with several approaches allowing you to fine-tune your character and the attributes that you could gain throughout the game to suit your chosen playstyle. For example, when trying to infiltrate a compound or rescue someone, either sneak in over a fence or use technical strength or brute abilities to open the door. Also, collecting loot 
as you go through the missions is wildly addictive and can make a big difference to your financial end game. Getting into a good routine, completing some missions and then heading to a weapon store and a clothes store to offload any collectible items is a great way to approach the game and you will almost always run into another mission or a gig or get a phone call on your hollow to direct you to your next opportunity. With the correct use of the manual save feature as well, you can protect yourself from any issues if you do come across a tough mission, and also if you want to reapproach any of the role-playing decisions that determine the direction the story takes based on your choices. Again, this is a smart way to approach the game. There are plenty of weapons and clothing available to loot from these missions if you want to focus spending your money on other things such as vehicles. I actually had a lot of fun considering these clothing options, which I realise is surprising for a game where you hardly ever get to see your character on screen. That is except for the third person camera angle available while driving and in the inventory menu and of course when you're looking in a mirror. I read somewhere that the inventory mechanics were quite poor in this game, but honestly, once you get used to how it works, I, I feel like it's meant to be that way and to force you into the menu when you want to make changes. So perhaps that's an opportunity for you to spend some time bonding with your character and figuring out how you want them to look as they approach the next part of the game. Ultimately though, playing the game incorrectly initially helped me to realise that this is not all about the main story campaign, which actually is not that long, just 15 to 20 hours. Actually, that's really short if you compare that to other games. Even CD Projekt Red's other major game, The Witcher Wild Hunt, has a total 50 hours for the main campaign. So to get the most out of my experience in Cyberpunk, I realised that the side missions and the other opportunities would be integral. In fact, a lot of the missions that start off as main missions progress into side missions to develop the story and at times the relationships between the characters available to V. What makes this game really special is the immersion. It's off the chart. If you play it long enough, you really start to feel like you understand the main character V and the issues which he or she is wrestling with as the story unfolds. The voice acting is superb throughout the game, especially Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhands, but also the supporting cast are brilliantly delivered. You don't really need a third person view of your character, as you can see and hear and at times even feel these reactions to pain and frustration, particularly if you're playing this on PS5 like me with a DualSense controller. The best thing about this game is the downtime. It took me a while to figure that out. Wandering around the city and driving into the Badlands is full of opportunities to develop your character build and seek fame and fortune. In the most part, the missions are expertly delivered through drip feed that encourages players to get up to other things whilst waiting for their next job to come through the hollow. The various updates in the game have made it expertly more playable. Fast travel, weight markers, and even new properties and customization to make it easier to keep things fresh. Actually, there are so many secret areas within the map and missions that will only pop up as you pass through certain areas. There are many awesome free vehicles you can find, as well as some impressive, devastating weapons to make your experience way easier too. You can choose your difficulty level from the outset if you want your character to be affected by tiredness or hunger. For some people this is probably a step too far and there are settings available for, which are easier for those who wish to focus more on missions and completing the various achievements. I think being a console gamer and having a next-gen console has its rewards. For games like this it allows the game makers to re-approach games post-release and do all kinds of magic to improve the experience for the player. The game still has legs with 17,000 players still jumping in on a daily basis and obviously this has a draw for new and returning players. There is a DLC planned for the imminent release and we don't really know when that's going to happen. Phantom Liberty is most likely going to appear later this year or early next year in 2023 or 2024. As we know it stars the impressive Idris Elba as the trailer has shown. This will be the first of many DLCs apparently, which is very encouraging for the player base. Some of these will be free and of course some of them you might need to buy. I would recommend this game to anyone who's been looking for a deep, immersive and rewarding open world masterpiece. Night City is dark and beautiful and the surrounding Badland areas are breathtaking and Cyberpunk 2077 is full of rich development and expertise and you can see and feel the passion that has been poured into this experience for the player. It is definitely worth playing in 2023, absolutely, you would not be disappointed.